everyone, this is Matt to Show, Intro Stats, and today we're looking at analyzing two different categorical data sets. So you have two different categorical variables, or you've asked people two different categorical questions, and you're starting to analyze those two questions and those two categorical variables and how much are, there, how much are they related, um, what are some of the key statistics we can calculate in dealing with two categorical data sets. So the one thing, the first thing we want to really create is something called a contingency table. So a contingency table just summarizes all the counts uh, for the, the two categorical variables. So in fall 2015 semester, we asked uh, our statistics students at our college two questions. We asked them, what uh, social media do they prefer? And, uh, and what do they have at least one tattoo or not? So this is some interesting kind of funny data. And we're looking at, um, so you can see here I have tattoo, no tattoo. And then these are some of the answers that the students gave. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, other, Snapchat, and Twitter. All right. And by the way, this is fall 2015. I'm sure things would change if we redid the study today. We'd probably get some different numbers. But if we're analyzing this data, this is sometimes called a contingency table. Contingency table. It's a summary of a, the counts for two different categorical variables. Um, so when you're looking at a contingency table like this, the first thing is don't create this thing by hand. Uh, you can, you know, you can do, you know, uh, tally marks and try to count it, like how many people said, had a tattoo and said Instagram. Uh, in our data, there was 41 of them, but I wouldn't want to count that by hand. Uh, most computer programs can create contingency tables for you. Uh, in a next video, I'll kind of show you how to create this contingency table with software. You really, once you get into bigger data sets, you're not going to really be creating these things by hand. Uh, let's kind of look at the contingency table a little bit, just so we understand. The individual cells, you want to kind of look at what's a column and a row. And by the way, these can be switched, like if you wanted tattoo to be the rows and the social media to be the columns, you could. Uh, I have it set up where the social media is the rows and the tattoo or not is the columns. So for example, if I just look at one number, this number 56 right here, notice it's in the no tattoo column and the Facebook row, right? So this would be people that had, did not have a tattoo and said they prefer Facebook as their favorite social media. There was 56 of them. If I pick another number, like um, 11. So 11 here, would notice it's in the tattoo column and the Snapchat row. So this would be 11 people actually have a tattoo and prefer Snapchat. So both those things are true about these 11 people. Now notice we have totals. If you're going to deal with percentage analysis, and remember categorical data is all about proportions and percentages, then we need amount divided by total, right? So you'll see these totals. Uh, some computer programs like Staccato, you'll see them write all here, A-L-L, -L, instead of total. I kind of prefer total, but some computer programs you may see different. So the totals are the total for that row or column. So it's important to know what total is that talking about. There's lots of different totals in a contingency table. So if I look at one of these, like 124, well, if you notice, that's the, the, this row total. So this is basically adding up 41 plus 83 and getting 124. That's the Instagram. So there was a total of 124 students that preferred Instagram. Or if I look right here, 241, if you notice that's the, the end of the no tattoo column. So this would be the total for all the people that said they did not have at least one tattoo. So there was 241 students that did not have a tattoo. Now what about this number right here in the very, very um, bottom right? In a contingency table, the very bottom right number is very famous. It's called the grand total. We actually had a grand total of 326 statistics students in this data. So this is what we call the grand total. Now if you notice a couple things, if you added the row total, I mean the column totals, 85 and 241, it adds up to 326. Okay, these two add up to 326. If you added up all the row totals, these totals, these row totals 
would also add up to 326, but you can't add the row totals and the column totals. That'll add up to double the grand total. So just a, that's a few features of a contingency table. By the way, you will sometimes we hear, we, uh, hear people refer to a contingency table as a two-way table. A two-way table. Um, eh, most people in the stat world call it a contingency table. So a contingency table is a better way to say it, but you will hear people sometimes refer to this as a two-way table. Um, now, tables always have a size, the size of the table. Um, and that always goes to the number of rows by the number of columns. The one thing is you can't count, don't count the, the uh, descriptions, and don't count the totals. The totals don't count in terms of how big your table is. So it's the number of rows, not counting totals, by the number of columns, not counting totals. So if we look at the number of rows, we had Facebook, Instagram, other, Snapchat, Twitter, that's five. So we had five rows, total doesn't count. And then in terms of columns, we had tattoo and no tattoo, again, total doesn't count. So this would be a five by two table. If we saw the real data, you'd see that the the categorical data that's asked if you have a tattoo or not is either yes or no. There's only two options in that categorical data. And when they asked them what social media they preferred, uh, there was only five responses. So these five responses. So it's really that's where this comes from. So it's a five by two table. If I put the tattoos as the rows and the and the insta and the um, uh, social media as the columns, then it would be a two by five table. But this one, the way this is set up, it's called a 5 by 2 table. Okay? Alright, so let's get right into it. So when we're analyzing this kind of data, we want to start to look at, really, our, it's all about percentages. We've already talked about how categorical data, when you analyze categorical data, it's all about percentages. So there's a bunch of different percentages that we look at when we're looking at two categorical data sets. Uh, the first one is called a marginal percentage or a marginal probability or marginal proportion. These are all words that really all refer to the same idea. Uh, the one thing about a marginal percentage is that you're really asking a question that involves only one of the two variables. You're not really asking something that involves both variables. So let's look at an example. What percentage of all the students have a tattoo? Now a couple things to look at. First of all, they're only asking for tattoo. They didn't mention anything about social media. So that's a kind of a classic sign that you're dealing with a marginal percentage, a one variable percentage. Also, the word of is very important in this kind of thing. Of all the students. That means that always refers to what total you're dealing with. If you're, if you're, if you're taking a percentage of all the students, then you should be using the grand total as your total since you want to include all the students. Later we'll see that that'll change when we get to conditional percentages and I say something like what percentage of the Twitter students have a tattoo, that'll change the total. You won't be using the grand total anymore. But if it says what percentage of all the students, right, now we're talking about of all the students, so we're going to be using the grand total as our total. Now we learned in categorical data analysis that we're always trying to figure out an amount out of the total, right? So it's really just about finding what's the amount and what's the total. But that can be kind of tricky because you're dealing with a lot of different totals and a lot of different amounts. So you have to really pay attention to what is the question asking. Of all the students, so I know it's got to be the grand total I'm using for my total, but what's the amount? Well, we're looking for tattoos, right? So what was the amount of people that have a tattoo? Where would I find that information? Well, tattoo will either be a row or a column. In this case, it's a column. Here's the tattoo column. And if I go down to the very bottom of that column, that's the total for the tattoo. So this is the amount of people that said they have at least one tattoo. There was 85 of them out of everybody, right? Out of all the students. So 85 divided by 326. If you notice, both those numbers came in the totals. They're not in the regular table, they're in the totals, or what we call the margins. They're in the margins. And that's where it gets its name, marginal percentage. The, the, the amount and the total both came in the margins. So that's just kind of where, where you hear that name, marginal percentage. Now, like we learned in categorical data analysis, right, 85 divided by 326, 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and divide that on our calculator. Um, and we'll get 0 0.26073 and it just keeps going, right? Now, if you remember, when we did categorical data analysis, we like to round proportions to three decimal places, right? Or the thousandths place. So I'm rounding really to this zero here, right? The third number to the right of the decimal. By the way, remember, the decimal equivalent of a percentage is called a proportion. So this, again, is a proportion. Don't forget that word. That's a really important num uh, word in categorical data analysis. So here's the proportion. And notice I, I'm going to look to one number to the right of the zero. It's a seven. So I'm going to round up, which means I'm adding one to the zero. So I'm going to get approximately 0 0.261. That's my proportion of the students that have a tattoo. But the problem asked me for the percentage. If the problem just said what proportion of students, of all the students have a tattoo, I could leave my answer as 0 0.261. But since it, again, it wanted me to make a percentage, I'm going to multiply the answer by 100%. Remember, that's how we said we convert a proportion into a percentage. So 0.261 times 100, or move the decimal two places to the right, and I get 26.1%. Your percentage should be rounded to the tenths place. In other words, and you notice it already is. So usually you have one number to the right of the decimal in your percentage. So that's kind of a very standard um, rounding in uh, percentages. So we got 26.1% of all the students had a tattoo. Okay? So that's a marginal one variable percentage. Now let's start getting into percentages that involve both variables because that's where really the analysis comes in, right? I want to kind of understand how these work together. So uh, one of them that we like to uh, calculate is called a joint probability or a joint percentage or joint proportion. Again, three names for really the same ideas. Um, the one we're going to look at first is called the intersecting percentage or the intersecting probability. We refer, look at the word and is very important in there and usually the word both like a lot of times you're looking you want you want two things to be true about this person or object. So what percentage of all the students both 